Brian Johnson, congratulations, first of all, on the Oscar for Alien and for your work on The Empire Strikes Back, which is a large part of the reason why the picture is so utterly enthralling. Now, you, you do design, but in this particular film, design wasn't part of your brief, was it? No, um, Ralph McQuarrie, who's the conceptual artist, does most of the designs with uh, Joe Johnston. And George Lucas has a great deal to say about uh, what the models look like. Um, so once you've got the look of them, and this is incidentally what? This is the land speeder. Uh, there are a number of these craft on the ice planet Hoth. Yeah. Which you shot in Norway, didn't you? Which we did in Norway, yeah. Some of the construction crew up here, please. Bring the gun back to us again, Alan. But Alan, fucking you, you just made it Are you busy laying out the cable? Okay, don't all stand in groups or anything, just be busy. The fellas on the other side, they're the loud hailer. Bang! Colin, we're all scurry for the trenches. Start charging down. Yeah. From the middle of the track. Uh, group two now, please. Group two. Of you, if you stand over that side, because they're shooting in that that side. Okay. Good lad. You are just preparing for that. Otherwise, it'd be a total joke. But go off to the left. The war has started now. Yeah. The attackers are coming from over there, and you're shooting at them. There's explosions going on all around you. Okay. Crawl up here, please. Okay, down there. Take your position. Up right up here. Any questions? Don't do that. Please, please. What kind of problems did it give you to combine these and human beings in the same shot in Norway? Uh, it was quite a problem. We had white snow backgrounds. Uh, the speeders were a fairly light colour. Uh, we had other uh, objects going through as well, which were also light coloured. And making mats uh, to fit without showing any edges is always a great difficult, you know, it's a really bad job to do. And uh, we had to build a lot of new equipment to achieve that uh, result. This, for me, is one of the stars of the film. It's absolutely marvellous. They're, they're simply called walkers, are they? Yes. Uh, is that actual size? That is uh, one of the sizes, yes. We did build them various scales. Uh, in the picture, they look as big as camels, or no? No, bigger, they're bigger than that. They're 50 yeah. or 60 feet. Because one of these yeah. flies under the legs, isn't it? That's correct, yeah. Yeah, yeah it actually zooms through. Um, How did you animate those? Well, this is an animated model. Uh, the armatures are actually built into the whole design. These, the joints yeah, bend? The there. joints bend with constant friction. And uh, you, take, you make one move, and then uh, take one frame and then make another move and then take another frame. And this again is a George Lucas conception? Uh, George Lucas, Ralph McQuarrie, Joe Johnston, uh, a number of people had a hand in the basic design. We have an amazing crew here. It's very much teamwork. It's a number of really complex elements which have to be combined, which involves model shops, art department, optical, roto work. It's probably the best crew with this sort of work in mind that I've ever worked with. This is the joystick that operates the camera and model functions. We've got 12 pots here operating 12 stepping motors. And each channel can be recorded separately and then played back through the memory system. And then we can build upon that uh, to get our final motions. We've got uh, camera track, model track, camera boom, model pitch, model nodal, roll, traverse. And then these are camera motions here, tilt and pan and camera roll, and then we have two extra channels that we can record uh, either program a focus or record motors on a model or something like that. Okay, ready and go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Okay, good. Now, I think you did a lot of the, the movement of the land speeder here at George Lucas's private place, ILM, in the, in the States. How did it operate? Well, what we do is we put this model against a blue screen backing, and we have a, a, a computer-controlled camera device which tracks up and down a track and swings around on an arm, 
and photographs this model, but we can also motorize the model to move as well. So th these flaps, for instance? So these flaps down. are on little stepping motors, the heads turn on little stepping motors, so when the formation flying is going on, you see the pilot's head turn around and actually look towards the other land speed of the cameras inside. And uh, the flaps come up and down to operate the, uh, the basic configuration of the, the vehicle. But uh, computer control uh, camera work is pretty well unique to America at the moment and the George Lucas facility is probably the, the finest facility available at this time. And in terms of time and money then, this alone represents a tremendous investment? Yes, it does. Uh, I mean, e each model has to be manufactured so that it can do a variety of functions and uh, they're very expensive and uh, we have to build a number of different sizes of them to get all the shots in the picture, you know, because you see long shots of them and close-ups and everything else. Yes. Each one needs a different, different model. What was your biggest challenge in this, in this film? Because you hadn't done Star Wars, had you? No, I hadn't. I, I think really um, making sure that all the live action stuff went together with all the model stuff, because the live action in Norway and England uh, was a totally separate entity from the, the Californian operation. Uh, Even though you hadn't done the previous picture, you had to know the house style, as it were, of Gary Kurtz and George Lucas. Yeah. How did you pick that up from drawings, from uh, seeing the film lots of times? Looking at Ralph McQuarrie's drawings, talking to George Lucas and uh, Gary Kurtz, and uh, saw the, the movie four or five times uh, and ran it on rock and roll so I could look at each That's individual going, shot going backwards back. and forwards, yeah. 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 Now, you were, you did have, of course, a couple of the mechanical stars inherited. That's R2-D2 and C-3PO. Did yes. you make any changes to them? Uh, C-3PO was really Tony Daniels yeah. inside the suit, so that wasn't our sort of problem. But R2-D2, we had to re-engineer all the radio control and actually redesign the, the shell of R2. We built it in a composite epoxy uh, resin fiberglass molded structure rather than aluminium and then fitted everything inside that. Why was the change necessary? Well, looking at the first ones, uh, they had a few problems which uh, slowed down shooting on the, on the uh, stage, so we attempted to uh, increase the speed of shooting so we could run them for a longer period of time and not hold units up. Uh, nevertheless, the first one also worked reasonably well. We just sort of enhanced the, the operation. Really. And it must be very flattering to you that uh, an American production team chose English technicians such as yourself for a job like this? Well, yes, I, I think partly because they have to make half the film over here. Well, they, that's the way they do it, uh, so they use English technicians. And it made a lot of sense for the sort of uh, special effects supervisor to go on to the other side as well. So there was a coordination between two units. Brian, thank you very much.